In this bottle is a clear liquid, some blue beads and some white beads. And you can see that the blue beads are more dense than the liquid, so they're, they've sunk to the bottom. The white beads are less dense than the liquid, so they've risen to the top. But if you wait for a few seconds, the contents of the bottle starts to behave in an unexpected way. The blue beads and the white beads are drawn towards each other. Bum, bum, bum. So the plot thickens. Actually, it's quite straightforward. There are two liquids here, water and isopropyl alcohol. The water is the most dense, and then the blue beads are slightly less dense, the white beads are slightly less dense again, and then isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, that's the least dense, so it floats to the top. The trick is to arrange the densities so that when you mix the two liquids together, the average density of those two liquids is somewhere between the density of the white beads and the density of the blue beads. So, the plot thins. Except it doesn't. There's another mystery here, because isopropyl alcohol and water are soluble. In fact, better than that, they're miscible, which means they're soluble in all proportions. So when you mix these two liquids together, they shouldn't separate. And yet, we can see them separating in front of our very eyes. So there's something else going on. So how do you separate two liquids that don't want to separate? You might think that you could maybe heat the solution up, and if you get the temperature right, then one of the substances will boil away, leaving the other one behind. You can't do that with these liquids because these two liquids mix together in such a way that they boil off at the same rate at all temperatures. Chemists want to separate organic molecules from water all the time, so they've figured out how to do it, and they use a process called salting out. To understand salting out, you need to understand what makes isopropyl alcohol and water soluble in the first place. And it's something called hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds aren't as strong as molecular bonds, but they help to keep molecules together so that they can swim around each other and be happy in each other's company. And so isopropyl alcohol molecules can hydrogen bond to water molecules, meaning that they're soluble. But if you add salt to the solution, then you're adding sodium and chlorine ions. And those sodium and chlorine ions strongly hydrogen bond to the water molecules, preferentially over the isopropyl alcohol molecules, meaning that the isopropyl alcohol molecules have nothing to bond to and they swim off and go their separate ways. So in the bottom there, it's not just water, but it's salt saturated water. So in fact, when you mix these two liquids together, you're not forming a solution, you're forming an emulsion where tiny pockets of one of the liquids is suspended in the other. And you can see what that looks like under a microscope. Just for a giggle, here are the two liquids without the beads in between, and it's almost impossible to see the boundary between the two. I've been experimenting with dyeing the two liquids different colors. You can see there's a slight difference in color here, but it's hard to find a dye that preferentially works on one liquid and not the other. I think I can get there, um, not in time for this video, but in fact, this whole attempt to color the liquids has given me an idea for a whole different video, because I'm gonna save it for then. So there you go, isopropyl alcohol and water and salting out. If you enjoyed this video, congratulations, you have good taste. If you've enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, I mean, I don't know what you're playing at. Subscribe to the channel. It's embarrassing. Everyone's talking about you liking my videos but not subscribing. So really, you should do that. Um, but yes, I will see you next time. What was that noise? Kicked some things. It's a mess in here.